Hi, right, engineers. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to begin our embryology series. Okay, so if you guys haven't already, we're going to start from the end of fertilization, which is on a reproductive playlist. If you guys haven't seen that already, go watch that first. We're not going to go into a ton of detail on that. We're kind of just going to skip over pieces and begin the development within the first week. Then after that, what we'll do is we'll go into the next video, which is going to be the development up until the second week. Right. So we're going to go over gastrulation. Then we'll have another video where we're going to the development uh, during uh, up to week three, which is going to involve the neurulation process, and then we'll discuss. The, the formation of the nervous system and we'll just continue to keep going from there until the development of the entire embryo. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, Nizhia, so let's go ahead and get started then. So first off, we have to talk about, before we kind of get into all the cellular events, I want us to really kind of correlate our anatomy with the kind of the bigger picture, then we'll get down to the cellular events. So if you guys remember from the fertilization video, just a little bit about your uterine anatomy, right? So very simple here, this is gonna be the vagina, they also call it the sheath, right? Then you're gonna have this portion right here, right? Which is called the cervix of the uterus. Then we'll kind of get into the body of the uterus right here, up this top like portion here, which is kind of rounded out like that. That's gonna be the fundus of the uterus. And then here you're gonna have your fallopian tubes, right? And then at the end of the fallopian tube, you kind of have this little dilated region right there. That's called the ampulla of the fallopian tubes. That's where fertilization is supposed to occur, right? Then you got your little fingers, little fimbrae, right? And then after that, you got the ovaries, right? So what's important is that in order for us to really kind of talk about the cellular events, we have to understand the physiology going into this. So what happens? Usually around day 14 or day 15, of a female's uh, menstrual cycle, right? Uh, I'm sorry, ovulation cycle, they start to release a specific type of hormone, right, called luteinizing hormone. So if you guys remember here, let's draw like a little diagram here. We're gonna have this guy. I bet you guys remember this diagram. It's probably ingrained into your brain right now. We're gonna have the hypothalamus with the uh, posterior pituitary and anterior pituitary. That's not nut sacs, okay? So just remember that. Now, what happens? The hypothalamus starts releasing specific types of neuropeptides. What are these neuropeptides called? They're called gonadotropin releasing hormone. And then what does gonadotropin releasing hormone do? Lots of it too. It stimulates the anterior pituitary. What does it tell the anterior pituitary to do? It tells it to start secreting large amounts of luteinizing hormone, all right? And this is also kind of playing a role, not just with the GnRH, but if you guys remember a little bit back from your uh, uh, kind of the, the menstrual physiology, there's also another very big trigger here, and that's going to be estrogen. If you guys remember that positive feedback cycle, when estrogen levels increase again, right, during the second time, that's also a big stimulator of luteinizing hormone as well. All right, anyway. Luteinizing hormone, it's released. It gets into the blood, goes down to the ovary. What does it do? Well, if you guys remember, it tells the ovary to kind of start producing a lot of fluid, right? So it tells the ovary to start making a lot of fluid, pressurize that follicle. Because remember, we have that graphene follicle, which is the guy who's gonna have that secondary oocyte. What does he do? He triggers the release of certain types of prostaglandins to dilate the vessels to increase a lot of the leakiness out of the capillaries around that graphene follicle and activate certain types of enzymes, metalloproteinases, to break down the connective tissue around it. And guess what that helps? Helps to pop that little oocyte out. And then what happens is the fembrae, they get all kinds of cool and they start kind of moving that actual oocyte towards what? The ampulla. Then this little oocyte here, we're gonna draw it right here. And here's gonna be the corona radiata around it it gets popped out here, right? So now that's our secondary oocyte. Now if you guys remember, I talked about it in the kind of the whole ovulation cycle that this is the secondary oocyte. What that means is that it's already undergone meiosis one and it's getting ready to go into meiosis two, right? It's getting ready to finish meiosis two, but it hasn't yet. What stage is it particularly in? Well, if you guys remember, we said that once it ovulates, it's stuck in a specific phase. It's a secondary oocyte in metaphase two. That's an important thing to remember. Secondary oocytes stuck in metaphase two. The reason why is it's waiting for a sperm cell to touch it. And then once it does, it says, oh, I, what I need is here. I'm gonna go ahead and finish meiosis two, get myself prepared for this nucleus from the sperm cell, and then I'm gonna fuse with it. So it's waiting and waiting. And who is it waiting on? 
It's waiting on the lucky son of a gun, right, who gets the sperm cells where they need to go. And what happens is the sperm, once it's ejaculated, it goes into the vagina, up through the cervix of the uterus, up through the body. It makes its way through the fallopian tubes, and it meets that nice little secondary oocyte metaphase two at the ampulla, right? And it says, hey, I wanna go ahead and touch you. Now, not in a creepy way though. All right, so it goes ahead and it touches it, and then guess what starts happening? Well, let's go ahead and dig into that. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna imagine that these guys are touching one another right here in this kind of like zone. We're gonna blow it up, and we're gonna take a look-see. So now we're blowing it up here, and here we're gonna have that egg, right? So we have that secondary oocyte stuck in metaphase two. This is the one. Then we got that sperm cell, and that sperm cell is coming over here to meet this egg, all right? But in order for it to be able to touch it, if you guys remember, it has to go through a process called capacitation where it has to clean off a bunch of cholesterol molecules and things off of the head of it. And then it has to attach to a specific type of protein on the surface. And what is this protein? If you remember, we have what's called ZP3 receptors. And these ZP3 receptors are really important because once the actual sperm touches, so ZP3, receptors. Once the sperm cell touches it, it activates the sperm cell. And then the head of the sperm cell fuses with the zone, with the oocyte's membrane. It starts releasing a bunch of different enzymes, lysosomes, hydrolytic enzymes from its acrosome, and it starts burrowing its way through this. Then what it does is it releases its nucleus. You see this little green guy? It releases its nucleus into the cytoplasm. So here's going to be this nucleus. Now, in the nucleus, you know that there's chromosomes, right? 23 chromosomes are gonna be in the sperm cell nucleus and 23 chromosomes are going to be in the oocytes nucleus. Well, what happens is, let's see here, 23 are gonna be paternal and 23 of the other chromosomes are going to be maternal. These are going to fuse. When they fuse, how many are you gonna get? What's 23 plus 23? It's 46, right? So you're gonna get 46 chromosomes now and this is going to be a diploid cell, but we're also gonna call it a zygote. So again, how many chromosomes? 23 plus the 23, 23 maternal, 23 paternal, 46 total chromosomes, and this is going to give us our zygote. Now, it's pretty amazing when you think about it that from this one cell, this one cell, we're actually gonna be able to make an entire human body. That's pretty amazing. So how does this happen? This zygote, guess what? It starts undergoing lots and lots and lots of proliferation. So it starts going through a G1S, G2, mitosis, and just starts replicating and replicating and replicating. What is that called whenever it starts replicating and making two cells, then four cells, then eight cells, then 16 cells? That's called cleavage. So it's very simple. We've already talked about fertilization. Now what do we have to go through? We have to go through a bunch of stages called cleavage. So it's very simple now. Now it's just a matter of counting it up. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide this cell. It was once one cell, guess what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna now have two cells. Now, here's the important thing to remember. Remember I told you that this pink membrane had a protein called the zona pellucida 3 receptor. That pink protein is called the zona pellucida. So you're gonna have it in fertilization, you're gonna have it in the zygote, and you're also gonna have it in this cell where it divides. What's this cell called? This is now called the two cell stage. Uh, it's very simple, right? So zygote, you're gonna go into the two cell stage. Guess what it's then gonna do then? It's then gonna divide again. It's gonna go from two cells and you're gonna double that. So now it's going to be four cells. So let me do this now. So there's going to be four cells. So this is the four cell stage. Then what? I bet you already guessed it. It's gonna divide again and it's gonna turn into the eight cell stage. And then what do you think it's gonna to go to after that? It's gonna to go to the 16 cell stage. So, throughout that process now, if you imagine we're gonna have eight cells here. And then before you know, we're not gonna draw in all 16 cells here. What you know here is that you're gonna to have tons and tons and tons of cells. And what this is gonna do is it's going to form a kind of structure which is very interesting. What do I mean? Okay, 
you're going to have these cells and they're going to be surrounding the entire thing, surrounding this entire structure, right? So it's an entire circle. You have these cells surrounding it, but inside the center of it is hollow. There's nothing in there, okay? So if you were to imagine, let's imagine I took like a cross section here. Here's going to be all the cells, right? Forming the outer coat. There's our cells forming the outer coat. But inside of this, there's nothing. It's completely hollow. What do we call this? Anything from 16 cells and up until we get our blastocyst, we call this the marula. So we call this one the marula. And this is basically going to be a hollow ball of cells, which is going to be 16 or plus cells. And what they call these, they like to give these cells a special name, these little circular blue cells here. Once it's at the level of the marula, they call these blastomeres. Blastomeres, okay. So that's important to remember. Now, from here, what's gonna happen then? Okay, so now we have this marula, right? The marula, guess what it starts to do? It starts to take the cells, right? You have the cells right here forming the edge, where what's gonna happen is a bunch of the cells in the center, there's gonna be a bunch of cells that start compacting towards one edge, all right? So you're gonna have the cells lining the edge of the cell. So let's do it like this here. You're gonna have these cells, they're gonna be kind of lining the edge. And they're gonna form one type of cell structure that's very important because this helps to go on and form a part of the placenta, okay? Then, an another group of the cells around that are gonna group towards one side and kind of clump together. Let's do that in a different color so that we don't confuse this. Let's do this in this green here. Now, we're gonna have these other cells and they're gonna be kind of grouping together here and now, we had a hollow ball. Now what we do is we have a cell lining around the edge, and we have just a bunch of group of cells just clumped together in this one edge over here. What do we call this? This is going to be our blastocyst. So the process of where we're going from the marula into the blastocyst is your blastulation process. So now, what do we have here? We're gonna have our blastulation. And we're gonna form here our blastocyst, which is so darn cool. Now, within the blastocyst, you're gonna have this fluid-filled cavity. So it's gonna be all fluid in here, right? But then this group right here, this bunch of cells that are gonna be kind of clumped here together, this becomes a specific thing, right? We call this part here the inner cell mass, okay? And then the cells around the edge or the periphery of it, this is gonna be called the, very simple, outer cell mass. Now, what happens is these cells, they start to differentiate and become more functional, right? And what happens is they become a little bit more differentiated, a little bit more functional, and then they become a different type of name. We just like to change names for things all the time. So now, what happens? They continue to differentiate, continue to develop, and now that outer cell mass becomes a specific type of thing which we call the trophoblast. So now this outer cell mass is now what we call a trophoblast. It becomes a little bit more differentiated, a little bit more specialized, and we call this the trophoblast. Then we had that inner cell mass, it starts to become more specialized and more differentiated, and it turns into a specific thing, which is gonna be important. And this is gonna be called the embryoblast. This is called the embryoblast. So all I want you to really know is the outer cell mass becomes the trophoblast, and the inner cell mass becomes the embryoblast. Why is that important? Because guess what eventually the trophoblast becomes, which we're gonna talk about next. It then differentiates into two other specialized layers. One is going to be called the cytotrophoblast, which we'll talk about. And the other one is going to be called the syncytiotrophoblast. The embryoblast, guess what it's going to start developing into? It's going to start developing into your bilaminar disc. So, and we'll talk about how that happens, but this is going to start converting into your bi 
laminar disc. So within this first week, right, that we've talked about, what happened? We had ovulation was the first step, right? So let's go ahead and mark out down our steps. First step was ovulation, right? Second step was fertilization. Okay, and that was here, this was here. And then continuing on down here, this is still fertilization, right? So this is still the fertilization step. Then what happened from all the way from the zygote all the way until the 16 cell stage? This was all called cleavage. So we'll write that down. That was the third step, okay? Then what happened after that? Then the next thing is the marula converted into the blastocyst, okay? That's gonna be the fourth stage. So the fourth step is going to be blastulation. Then after that, the blastula became more specialized and converted into a trophoblast, which used to be the outer cell mass, and the embryoblast, which used to become the, which used to be the inner cell mass. Then they will become even more specialized and the embryoblast will become the bilaminar disc, which is gonna be the epiblast and the hypoblast, which we'll talk about. And the trophoblast is gonna become the cytotrophoblast and the syncytiotrophoblast. This is important because these help to be able to make your structures like the placenta, okay? Whereas the embryoblast is gonna make the embryo, right? So this will then go from the bilaminar to the trilaminar and that'll help us to make our entire embryo. So that's why this is so important. And this is generally occurring within the first week. What we'll do next is we'll take this um, uh, trophoblastic cell with the embryoblast and we'll talk about how it sprouts these little things. We'll talk a little bit more about the syncytiotrophoblast with the villi and how it breaks through the zona pellucida. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the embryoblast and how that converts into the bilaminar disc. All right, so we'll talk about that in the next video.